the dream respectfully dedicated to Master Consul Hasting. As the other night, young Damon lay, a dreaming o'er his studious day. To his lone couch there stole with grace the likeness of his Galia face. Above his raptured eyes it hung, and round his heart a magic flung, till all the gifts of heaven seemed blent in one fair figure's slight extent. The nymph, though fair enough in truth, shone doubly to the spellbound youth, for in her childish look there gleamed a score of charms he only dreamed who shall with fitting pencil draw the vision that young Damon saw the task is sure beyond my skill whose nights such visions never fill fancy a visage young and fair with every so-called goddess mingled air a lip Envious graces lack, and matchless eyes of lustrous black, tresses of silk as dark in hue as summer midnight sweet with dew, and a slim form whose robes of white trailed by the like clouds of filmy light. This Damon saw, and as he gazed, his love to ardent luster blazed. The bending nymph he dumbly viewed, and blessed the pleasing solitude. Closer the lovely phantom came, as brighter burned the stripling's flame, till ere her kind intent was known, the vision's lips had touched his own, and bliss the conscious youth essayed to clasp the form his dream had made. But such rude haste all spells must break, so Damon started broad awake. Delia, he cried, return, return, to quench the fires that in me burn. But empty space repeats his cries, and only memory fills his eyes. Transported thus, young Damon swore his nymph in virtue to adore. With sounding oath, he vowed that never to well-known sports he would repair. Caricius's banquets, rich with wine, he vowed forever to resign. The games, the dice, the friendly cup, all these forthwith he must give up. Sustained by vows, he sought the street, nor could a saint more vows repeat. That evening, as he called to mind, the virtues of the day behind, the solemn rigor of his tread, the wines untouched, the jests unsaid. Young Damon sought to pass the time, now grown so dull by scribbling rhyme. With hard-pushed quill he strove to tell of comely Delia's magic spell, of love and youth and th of love and youth and such affairs as bards concoct to kill their cares. But sad to say, it was soon made clear that verse was not his proper sphere. Though great the pains a bard may take, fine dreams will oft poor dactyles make. The hour grew late, but still the swain to write his thoughts essayed in vain. When sudden all his virtues knew, burst in a curse and fled from view, cried he, how vast! A dunce am I to put my solid pleasures by. If dreams my soul to good impel, I'll dream my virtuous life as well. And you don't deny your desires, but just to fill them. Um, it's more than that to do, right? 